EFC Africa 24, the second chapter of the biggest rivalry in EFC Africa is about to be written as the middleweight champion Jeremy Smith goes to war with the former champion Gareth McClellan. Plus, the most dominant champion on the continent, DeMart the Wolf Penna, will put it all on the line against the devastating kicks of Elaine Ilunga. This is their journey to the hexagon. Smith is the EFC Africa middleweight champion. He is one of the toughest and most tenacious fighters in the organization. To become the champion has always been my, one of my dreams. It was a great accomplishment for me. The win was, was a highlight of Jeremy's career to date. Jeremy Smith is the epitome of a mixed martial artist. He is great in every aspect of the sport. He's 100% skilled, well-rounded. He's a complete fighter. He's a professional. Fighting life. I love it. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> oh, and he slips down. Oh, Smith coming over the top. Oh, Jeremy Pitbull Smith, the most ferocious and lethal middleweight that I've ever seen. Having already beaten all the contenders in South Africa, Jeremy Smith went to the United States to look for new opportunities and challenges. He came up against a top 10 contender in Joe Ray and proved why he is one of the toughest athletes in MMA. It was my best fight ever. I really had a lot of fun with that one. He uh, chipped my orbital and cracked my cheekbone in the first round, and then I just went off. I just, uh, the XFC still says it was the best fight they've ever seen. I don't think people can imagine what it's like to have your cheekbone cracked in the first round, fighting in front of thousands of people. Anyone that can fight a top 10 contender and beat him in his hometown decisively after having massive injuries, you know, anyone that can do that and then find that grit and willpower to still win that fight convincingly and aggressively, you know, that's a champion to me. To get him clicked on, you just got to hit him a few good hard times and then, just, then you, you really got the real Jeremy Smith coming out. And that's how he is when he fights. He puts everything out there. When Jeremy's done and dusted, he'll still get up and continue. He has that will to do it. He refuses to lose. And uh, this is what makes him the complete all-round athlete that he is. I just want to go there and fight. Uh, get my name out and to see how it was overseas. Gareth McKellen, the former EFC Africa middleweight champion, is by far the most popular athlete in the organization. Soldier Boy makes his way into the hexagon. Watch him transport. A fan favorite. They love him. After losing the middleweight title, he has gone back to the drawing board, completely reinvented himself, and he has swept aside and destroyed every single person in the middleweight division. With do or die performances against Van Heerden, De Brain, and Maputa, McClellan has electrified fans, proving that nothing will stand behind between him and the very top of the middleweight division. There's a hunger inside me that I haven't experienced for a long time. I'm in a situation where I want this bad. The only thing that's stuck in his mind right now is to get that belt. I mean, there's nothing you can do to stop him. Gary's in a good state of mind. Uh, he's physically ready. He can fight today. I will make sure that I execute what I want to execute with 100% perfection. Soldier Boy is a man obsessed with the title. The only thing he can think about is getting the belt back. An avid sports enthusiast, McClellan excelled at rugby, nearly going professional, but due to a knee injury, McClellan's dream of professional rugby disappeared. It was then that Gareth was introduced to mixed martial arts by a man named Jason Vorster. He said to me one day in a conversation that there is an opportunity for me to really do well in the sport. He said I, I had a knack for it and I, I should give it a try. Before I knew it, I was really into my first pro fight, um, finding a guy like uh, Wade Henderson, who was a massive name at that stage. I came along to, to FFM and uh, met Richie, and I had an interesting conversation with him the first time that I, I chatted to him and Chef, and they asked me, they said to me, what is your goal? What do you want to achieve out of this? And I said to them, I want to be the best fighter in this country. 
I, I want to be the champion. With me understanding better about guys, um, the individuals, and uh, what works better, um, I just made a few few slight changes that made a big difference. Everything he does is with 100% intensity, 100% commitment, 100% dedication. Every time he trains, he he becomes a better athlete, he becomes a better person. We just try and help the guys be the, the best person and fighter that they can be on the day that they step into that cage. I put numerous hours of blood, sweat and tears into the sport. I believe that I have been a big part of what's grown the sport and, and, and changed it and, and, and helped it mold into something what it is. Putting in an aggressive performance in his EFC Africa debut, McClellan immediately made an impact not only on the sport but also on the fans. He went on to dominate everyone placed in front of him, earning himself a shot at becoming the inaugural EFC Africa middleweight champion. I got the call to say you know, you will be competing against uh, Jacques Chabé for the title. Um, and I just grabbed it and I ran. We got into the fight and uh, being an asthmatic, it's something that has affected me my whole life. And I had this asthma attack um, in the first round and I remember sitting in the corner and I said to Rich, Rich, we've got a problem, you know, I, I, I'm having an asthma attack, I can't breathe. And he said, it's not an option. Right now, it's not an option. Gareth had an asthma attack, he ripped his lungs in the fight and he still pulled it through all the way to the fourth round. Um, so that should tell people how far he can go to win a fight. It took me a week or so to realize, hey, you know, I, I'm the first EFC middleweight champion. And I think that was the biggest lesson that I learned out of it was that, you know, um, I'd gone through a, a large period of my life battling to achieve and um, what I'd wanted to achieve and I, and I kept on getting disheartened and, and, and down about that. And eventually I could stand proud and say, hey, look, you know, this is something I'd done. And I'd done it all on my own in terms of getting there and doing it. While McClellan was celebrating his title win, a new force arrived in the middleweight division in Jeremy Smith, making his EFC debut by dismantling Liam Clellan and getting an immediate shot at the sought-after middleweight crown. It was a bit, a bit nervous in that fight. It was, I think, the biggest crowd I'd fought in, front, in South Africa. Jeremy was a lot better prepped than he looked in that fight. He was a little bit tentative, and I think the pressure of the actual event got to him on the night. I got in there, um, I was focused, I'd worked hard, and I gave everything. I, I laid it all on the line. I, I didn't, uh, tr I didn't uh, hold back, I didn't allow myself to, to worry about what if and what, what could happen. In what was seen as one of the best fights on the African continent, both these athletes put everything on the line, and four rounds in, McClellan made a crucial mistake that Smith capitalized on to become the new EFC Africa middleweight champion. I said it the first time, I said that I would have to be perfect and there would be no mistakes. And um, unfortunately the mistake came and, and he punished me for it. He was up four rounds and he was winning the fifth round as well. He made a mistake. MMA is very, very unforgiving sport to make a mistake, it cost you the fight. Soldier Boy was a great win for Jeremy. It was his, his coming out party, should we say. I think everybody knew what Jeremy stood for and what commodity Jeremy was before the Soldier Boy fight. That was the biggest fight on the continent at the time. At EFC Africa 17, Smith made his first title defense against crowd favorite and good friend Darren Daniel and once again came out on top to successfully defend his champion status. A lot of people still say you are only the real champion once you have successfully defended your title. Last year in November we saw Jeremy go up against Darren Daniel. Big crowd favorite, a big favorite to win that fight and Jeremy actually put him away in the very first round. We prepped very hard for that fight and it went pretty much exactly the way we hoped. Well that fight was purely business. There was no emotion in it, go in there, get the job done, and that was it. I think Darren Daniels' mistake in that fight was that he didn't realise that Jeremy hits back. We expected him to come forward, to throw kicks, to throw good punches, throw some knees. The one thing we didn't know about Darren was whether he could take a big shot. He got very comfortable, he got into a zone in the first minute of the fight and he thought he was comfortable in that zone. Jeremy hit him with a big left hook when he was trying to uh, throw a knee to Jeremy's body. Took him out and then we finished him on the ground. It's your friend, but it's in a cage. One person walked, well, two people walked in, one person walked out. An injury to Smith's hand forced the champion out of action for almost six months, but he has since come back stronger and feels confident of successfully dealing with the threat of McClellan. It's not gonna be like the last fight that he had. It's gonna be a totally different fight. I did show him too much respect in the first fight, and I'm not gonna show him any respect in this fight. What do our oppositional camp look at and say, where's Jeremy's weakness when there isn't one? When he gets in the hexagon, you know, the training's there, 
He's prepped, he's ready, and he is calm because he knows he's the best. Gareth's a good fighter. Uh, let's not let's give him that, but um, Jeremy is, is a level above him. Jeremy's skills are, are way above Gareth's, even if he didn't have the heart. His skills are enough to take the fights. Now, having the heart and the skills, it's, it's, it's almost like a no contest. I'm fighting my fight, I'm not fighting his fight, I'm going there to fight. Jeremy's going to make a point to make sure that he's going to get the big W and it's going to be a big one. And he's coming to redeem himself, so we've got to, we've got to be on our, on our toes for this. And we will be on our toes. We, we, we're ready to go now. After undergoing major knee surgery, McClellan returned to face the hard-hitting Tamelo Maputa. A three-round war ensued with McClellan coming out on top, guaranteeing himself another shot at the middleweight title. I decided that I, I, wanted, an, I wanted another chance at the belt, and that's exactly what I wanted and I was going to go for it and nothing was going to stop me. He's coming off a three win streak now. His first two performances were uh, technically amazing. He beat uh, two big guys. Um, his third performance, he didn't do so well. But at the end of the day, you know, you can't have a good day every day. And right now we're at the top of the game for him and he's getting ready to take the title back. So he has to have new skills. Everyone can see that every time he steps into the hexagon that He's a different fighter, he's improved, he's got new skills, he's, he's got new tricks up his sleeve. Gareth's evolved his skills, his stand-up, his ground, his wrestling, his jiu-jitsu, and his conditioning. Um, you know, we, we keep evolving, and that's going to be the key in this fight. He's come from, from something that he was to a complete different person, and he's got this, this calmness and this experience about him at the moment that it's unparalleled to anything that any of us have ever seen. My knees are in a fantastic shape, my body is in fantastic shape, and uh, I've put to this stage nine months of, of the hardest work of my life to be in the place that I am right now. People are going to see one of the best contested titles this country has ever seen. Jeremy Smith is the current EFC Africa middleweight champion. He's one of the most tenacious and toughest guys out there, and that is why he holds that belt. Jeremy came into EFC Africa with international and top level MMA experience, and it's shown in all of his fights. A dominant force in the middleweight division, Jeremy Pitbull Smith has annihilated every opponent in the hexagon and feels his reign as champion will continue for a long time. I'm champion, I got the belt. If he's gonna take it from me, he wants to be a champion, and he's not taking it from me. It's my belt and stay with me. He's got everything that he's got through hard work and he's not going to let it go, not for anyone. The former middleweight champion Gareth Soldier Boy McClellan has torn through his last three opponents and will stop at nothing to get back what he feels is rightly his. Gareth's had to overcome a lot of adversity in his life and right now he's in a much clearer headspace and in a much better place than he was a year and a half ago. I believe that could make the difference for him. For the first time I'm 100% in tune with myself. I think my mind, my body and, and, and my emotional status is 100% online. He wants that belt, he's been working hard for it. So the only thing that's stuck in his mind right now is to get that belt. Gary's in a good state of mind. He's physically ready, he can fight today. If you wake up on Friday the 11th of October and you have missed this fight, you are gonna kick yourself. This fight is as big as it gets. We don't see ourselves losing anytime. I have no doubt uh, Jeremy will win this fight. Well, they can have the ice up this year. We've got the world flushing in Jeremy Smith. 10th of October is going to be a very interesting night and, and we'll see how it pans out. Gary's ready. Gary's ready to go five rounds, take it to the darkest place he can. It's going to be the most electrifying experience for the crowd that they, they, they have the pleasure of seeing. Will the pit bull once again stand victorious or will Soldier Boy return to the top of the division? It's Jeremy Smith versus Gareth McClellan. The rematch of the title fight was supposed to happen earlier this year. Both guys suffered injuries on separate occasions and finally now all roads have led back to Smith and McClellan too. This is a fight that turns your average Joe into an MMA fan. It's a fight every Everybody wants and the fight everybody watches. I have a job to do and that's the job I will do. I'm gonna catch him or put him down and I do. I want this bad. You're gonna see Jeremy Smith come to fight. You're gonna see the pit come out and you see me fight. He knows exactly what to expect and he knows what I'm capable of. Exactly like the first time I walk. At the end of the UFC Africa 24, I'll still be champion, my hands will be raised.
the second chapter of the biggest rivalry in EFC Africa is about to be written as the middleweight champion Jeremy Smith goes to war with the former champion Gareth McClellan in the fight that has been a year in the making. Will the champion rise out on top once again, or will Soldier Boy get his revenge on his old adversary? Plus, the most dominant champion on the continent, DeMarc the Wolf Penna, will put it all on the line against the devastating kicks of Elaine Ilunga. EFC Africa 24, Penna versus Ilunga, Smith versus McClellan 2. EFC Africa 24, Thursday, 10 October, Carnival City. Tickets and broadcast information at efcafrica.com. DeMart, the Wolf, Penna, the undefeated EFC Africa featherweight champion. At this point in time, DeMart, the Wolf, Penna is the most dominant champion in EFC Africa. It's amazing looking back at DeMart's debut to where he is now. He has grown into a true champion. Taking his first EFC Africa fight on only two days' notice, Penna has redefined his strategic and brutal style with every appearance, molding himself into the unstoppable force he is today. In his last successful title defense, we saw DeMart Penna come out. He was aggressive, he came forward, and he did exactly what he said he was going to do. Look for the finish and look for the kill. He wants to finish Abdul tonight, finish the title. Down, picks oh, up the left, wow. lands him down. Penner retains his title. Every fight is just like uh, uh, an opportunity for me to prove myself. Every time he fights, he fights the biggest fight of his career. In his last fight, Abdul got under his skin and he saw an angry wolf step into the hexagon. We expected him to quit uh, long the fight and we didn't think it was going to happen that soon. We wanted to grind him from uh, first round to however long it takes. His jits wasn't as great as he thought it was, and uh, the game plan worked because he did break. The one thing we've always seen with Penner is how much better he gets every single time he steps in the hexagon. He is one of those fighters that just gets better and better and better. Everything's changed, and it's just from his hard work and determination of training. Before, I was training as an amateur fighting like a pro, and uh, coming here was the best thing I've ever done for my career. For me, the biggest thing is my willingness to, to keep going when things are not going well for me. And I really want to win, and I believe I know how to win. The Mark Penner is still the champion and still undefeated in EFC Africa. It really is gonna take something special to get that belt away from him. He's the undefeated champ, five times. How can you underestimate a champion like that? And for my fifth defense, it's just his first time, and I'm going there to become champion once again. DeMart had a lot of doubters in the beginning, but nobody questions him now. He is the undisputed featherweight champion. DeMart, the Wolf Pena! Elaine, Commander Boy Ilunga, the most dangerous athlete in the featherweight division. Elena Lunga comes from a pure striking background and he possesses some of the most dangerous kicks in the game. Big kick fired off by Lunga. Jura race. Big body kick and another one. Elena Lunga's kicks finish fights. End of story. Elena Lunga has knocked out no less than two of his opponents with a single leg strike. Now, having added impressive submissions to his ground game, he sees nothing standing in the way between him and the title. In the Marcus Talyard fight, we saw him come in and display how good he actually is in the stand-up game. He picked him apart, hit him with tons of body shots, and then finished him with a submission. People underestimate what haven't seen yet. Um, is a line take down somebody and pin them down. He's not just a stand-up fighter, he can go to the ground and finish things there too. That was a wake-up call and they should take him seriously. He look at me, but Babu Sana Payangwana, and then Ilunga as a MMA fighter. Nazaki one fighter too. When he was landing those kicks on Taliyad, it was actually painful to watch. People think a lot only for Alan's kick. Alan's a good MMA fight. We don't worry about stand-up because we already sorted stand-up. Oh my goodness! In the Wesley Hawkey fight, he came in as a big underdog and he pretty much shocked everyone when he got the victory by submission. It was a big confidence boost. He got to show a bit of his, his ground game.
na kubeta hii. There were a lot of critics before the Hulk in the longer fight and he came out and he silenced every single one of them and he proved that he is the legitimate contender. He's big, he's strong, he's fast, he's explosive. I know he has other takes. Allen is souvent, Allen is, c'est un bon travailleur, il est déjà très dangereux. He came into EFC Africa predominantly as a high-level striker, and now with those two submission victories on his record, he most certainly possesses a great ground game. That is something that's going to scare the rest of this featherweight division. Uh, they're in for a surprise. It's definitely going to be a ground battle, and he's going to be on top, and he's going to be grinding and pounding. So expect fireworks in that night. Elaine has been the surprise package in the featherweight division. Is he going to spring another surprise in this upcoming title fight? Elaine, come in! At EFC Africa 24, the continent's two best featherweights will go head-to-head -head as the undisputed, undefeated featherweight champion, DeMart the Wolf Pena, puts his title on the line against the lethal kicks of the DRC-born Elaine Ilunga. Uh, he's going to fight smart, but he's super aggressive now, and he's going to come and bring the fight to Ilunga. He wants to be the aggressor, and he wants to be the one pushing the pace on the other guys, and he doesn't necessarily like to get hit. Ilunga poses a different kind of threat, something that Pena has never faced before. I don't think Pena has faced uh, an athlete like Elaine. I think he's in for a surprise because he's fighting a different level of athlete. As I'm not best fighter, that does a chance. Not Elaine Ilunga. The one thing Pena is not going to be in this fight is a punching bag. It's going to be interesting to see how Ilunga is going to deal with that pressure when he comes forward. I'm going to put the pressure down. He won't be able to deal with what, what uh, DeMar's going to throw at him. I will put the pressure on him. We'll see how he handles when he's getting hit. They think he's one dimensional. They're making a big mistake because he's coming in there. He's going to take Pena down. He's going to hurt him. It's not a question of uh, if he's going to take the belt. It's, it's a matter of when he takes the belt. Will the Wolf keep his undefeated record intact, or will Commander Boy get his hands on featherweight gold? It's DeMart Pena versus Elaine Ilunga. In the one corner, we have the reigning defending champion, DeMart Pena. He's done it all. He's faced a ton of different opponents. On the other side, we've got a little bit of an unknown entity. But the big thing is, Elaine Ilunga can take away that title with one single strike. That should be something that will be in the back of DeMart's mind. Elena Lunga is DeMart's biggest threat to date, and he might just possess the key that unlocks the Pena puzzle. That's what makes this fight so interesting. It doesn't matter what he decides to do, you know. It's about what he needs to do on the night. But no survivor, people go by Lunga, I buy back in one. Elena Lunga as a new champion in EFC 24. I have absolutely no doubt that that belt will still be mine. This is, is my time. Two heavyweights collide as the former heavyweight champion Ruan Potts squares off against the hard-hitting DRC boxing legend Ricky Micholas. Potts is a natural-born athlete and one of the biggest stars in EFC Africa. In a career spanning 15 years, Ruan Potts went undefeated, claiming the EFC Africa heavyweight title after only two appearances in the hexagon. At EFC Africa 18, in a rematch against Andrew Van Sale, he lost his title and vowed to take it back. Even though he lost his title to Van Sale, in that fight we saw a different Ruan Potts. He was actually out striking Andrew from pretty much everywhere and it forced him to take the fight to the ground. It went the full distance and for a heavyweight fight that's something you do not see. In the end it was a really close fight. Definitely hurting, no doubt now he's got the body class. The look for the trip again. Ruan Potts believes he is the best heavyweight on the continent and he feels it's only a matter of time until he gets his title back. Ricky Micholas is one big, bad dude. He's only got one thing on his mind, and that is knocking you out. A boxing superstar from the Congo, Micholas has made his fists count in every one of his four hexagon appearances. He has proved that once he connects, no man can stand with him. He has vowed to knock Potts out. We saw in his fights with Wilhelm Strauss and Paul Kitzman, when he lands at right hand, it's all over. Simon. Oh, 
In his fight with Saws, we saw a three-round war, which is something you don't generally get with heavyweights. He dropped Saws in the first round, and from there he really tried to finish. It was a crazy fight. Ricky wants to show that he can beat the best in the division, and here is his chance against Ron Potts. Will the former champion get the W that will take him to the title shot, or will the apocalypse get the big KO victory? It's Ruan Potts versus Ricky Micholas. second chapter of the biggest rivalry in EFC Africa is about to be written as the middleweight champion Jeremy Smith goes to war with the former champion Gareth McClellan in the fight that has been a year in the making. Will the champion rise out on top once again or will Soldier Boy get his revenge on his old adversary? Plus, the most dominant champion on the continent, DeMarc the Wolf Penna, will put it all on the line against the devastating kicks of Elaine Ilunga. EFC Africa 24, Penna versus Ilunga, Smith versus McClellan 2. EFC Africa 24, Thursday, 10 October, Carnival City. Tickets and broadcast information at efcafrica.com.